or you have a vision and you connect with the wrong people, they can easily distract you from getting where you want to go to. another episode another session of our monday neuro tip live session and this is really an extension of our mindset humans network where we come every monday or where i come every monday to teach and um this topic today is is going to form part is part of our 90 day session because we are going through a 90 day journey where we're really digging deep into actual goal setting the way god has ordained it to be based on how we are wired so today's session i've titled it's not personal and this has come about from the different conversations i've had with people and it's i just want us to come to the core of what will enable us achieve our goals because this topic in particular once you understand it and implement it will completely change your relationships, both in your personal life and professional life as well. So the key, one of the th things to remember is that you've got to believe in your dreams. The question is, do you know what your dreams are? Do you know what your purpose is? Because this is really important. And because to understand your purpose, you've got to understand what you believe in. And once, you, once you're sure that that is exactly what you want to believe, that the belief you have is right for you to enable you to achieve your goal and achieve your purpose, achieve your destiny, whatever it is you're aiming for, believe in it and be confident in who you are. In the network, we've been talking a lot about self-discovery because that is the first part of the, of the journey we're doing. And, being, and this understanding who you are, will give you confidence in who you are and confidence to then believe in your dreams or in God's vision for you. And the other thing I'll say before we really dig deep is stop seeking external validation. And as we go through, I'll explain why. And I'll come back to this. I'll look back to this as we go along. One of the things to remember is that we are all connected as human beings. And in fact, we are so connected that even the cells in our bodies are connected, interconnected with each other. And if you go deeper, you start looking at the, the actual cells. Then you look at the atom, the neurons, the protons, they're all connected. And it's this interconnection that creates energy. And you can go back to biology and you know how the cells produce energy. And the same thing, our connections based on probably our thoughts, beliefs, values, create an energy that then comes out in emotions for us. Same way that when you have relationships, it creates an energy. The question is the relationships you have, what kind of energy are they creating? And the, you know, are they creating energy that is enabling you to achieve your purpose? Both, I'm now talking of thoughts, of, of beliefs, of values, and personal interrelationships as well. So all these relationships that we form, form for some form of agreement. So it's either we are aligning with a positive one or a negative one. But the fact is that without agreement, you don't have a vision. You will not be able to achieve your vision. You'll not be able to achieve your dreams. You'll not be able to achieve your goals. So you need this agreement. And the agreement with how what kind of thoughts you have even the agreement with people because if you have a goal or you have a vision and you connect with the wrong people they can easily distract you from getting where you want to go to if you've got a goal and you've got a vision which a lot of people have especially at this time of the year the problem is that if the agreement with your thoughts 
is not aligned, is not a positive one, you will not achieve that goal or that vision. So having the goals, having the vision is good, which we all have. The question is, what kind of agreements or are, 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 you know, are you aligning to in terms of your relationships? So agreement is what you are aligned to. And these, you know, like I've mentioned, are things like, you know, internal ones and, de- and also external ones as well. The question is, are they serving you are they enabling you achieve your calling are they enabling you achieve your purpose are they enabling you achieve your destiny and this is a good place to just stop and think and this is why going through the self-discovery in the mindset women's network is so important because it will really get you to start thinking deeper than you know being than being very superficial so who and what you are connected to is so important. And this connecting to is even in terms of your um, location, where you are, what you're doing, your job, you know, different, all these things really make a huge difference to, you know, um, what you what you will be able to achieve. So it's really important to just stop and assess, you know, the connections that you have in terms of who you associate with, what you discuss, what you take in, what you watch, what you what what you're exposing yourself to, all these would make a huge difference. So each connection produces energy, and it's the energy that will then determine your state, which is your emotion, your feelings, and this is what will then drive you to take a particular type of action. It will also expose you to different, to be able to see or not see opportunities as well. So for example, if you're, if the association, which could be internal, external is a negative one, what you would then find is your focus moves towards that negative thing. And it prevents you from seeing the opportunities that should help you achieve or get to where you want to get to. So focus, our focus today is really going to be on the impact of taking things personally because because it impacts on your state, it impacts on your emotions, it impacts on your actions and will impact on your outcome overall. So I'm going to narrow it down today to really just looking now at not taking things personally. So you have the relationships. There are lots of relationships which we have no control over. It could be who you work with, your colleagues. It could be your manager. It could be people who you do business with. It could be family. It could, you know, it could be di- different things. But also paying attention to your thoughts as well makes a huge, huge difference. You know, understanding those thoughts makes a huge difference because then the question comes, are these thoughts helping you? Are these thoughts enabling you? Are these thoughts enabling you to achieve the goals you want to achieve? And is it time to actually understand that the thoughts you're having, even those you don't, you you probably should stop taking some of them personally because they are thoughts that have been, you've cultivated over time and they are not serving you. So it's time to get rid of those. But the best way to do that is to ignore them and create the new thought patterns that you want. Have you ever felt chained by life's challenges, past traumas, or negative beliefs? This is your time to break free with Mindsight Women's Network, where we dive into a harmonious blend of scripture, emotional intelligence, and neuroscience to dispel limiting beliefs and undergo the divine transformation God has planned for you. This is your chance to not only face life's crossroads, but to transcend them. This isn't just another membership program. It's your key to blending faith, neuroscience, and emotional wisdom. Reclaim your identity, live your purpose, and harness the divine power God holds for you. It's time to step into your light, thrive, and live on purpose. Become part of the Mindsight Women's Network today. So assuming that you've been put, um, or rather I'll say, assuming you've put in a lot of hours into a project at work, 
and in a meeting your boss or manager has with you tells you that they're disappointed in your in your activities or they're disappointed with your progress or disappointed with, with the level of skills that you've shown you know and you come out of this really disappointed because you probably put in so much work and energy into it you feel hurt you start doubting your own abilities thinking that you probably are not competent i don't know if you can relate to this on the other hand you as an entrepreneur you've probably just launched a new product after putting in so much work into it so much research it goes like after a few weeks you probably get a really negative review and this and, and the review could be that your product is overpriced or it's ineffective or it does it hasn't done what it says it will do or what they expected it would do you then feel disheartened questioning your whole business acumen and the value of your product and you start questioning should I, should i even be in business should i even be doing this same thing with the first scenario should i even be, be in this role am i even competent because the other people who probably who know better than i do you start you see those two scenarios a poor review, a manager that probably lashed out at you and told you you're not doing, you've not done well or something like that. Immediately, what you've done is taking it personal and it starts bringing in doubt into your whole ability. And this is where it becomes important to now step back. In the first case, what you could do is understand that what that person that has given you that feedback it's their perspective maybe the way they delivered it was was not was not good or was not right but remember it's their own delivery so they are acting based on how they are wired they are acting based on who they are based on their own circumstances they might even have had a bad day maybe there's even been pressure on them from above as well we don't know what kind of situation there might be issues outside work there might be issues in work but then they came and then just launched emotionally to you that you know in terms of what you've done now this is where you need to stop and step back and then realize that whatever they said whatever whatever information they gave you you need to now look at it and decide which which bit is relevant to you the feedback or criticism was it it was there any part of it that you feel justified because the problem is when you start getting defensive it's it's actually about you in terms of this is how i expected this person to deliver this message i expected them to say this so it becomes about you you see and this is where we as human beings become really selfish i want this information delivered to me this way but this person did not deliver it in the way i expected so in that in that situation for the first one take out what is important take out the crux of it what do you need what feedback do you need to help you improve use that forget about the delivery and all that because that is something you have no control over in terms of the entrepreneur look at the feedback as well and take the if there's anything in it that would help you improve your product take that and discard the bits that are not relevant also you can even go back to what you've done in before and maybe previous reviews positive ones and use those to help you and in the same situation with the person at work you know look at what you've done before and use that to really empower you because and it comes back to that self-discovery i know who i am i know what i can do now if it's being perceived differently then that means there's a communication to be had and this is where you then ask the person what the expectations of you are because you they might have expectations that you are not even aware of so it's having that communication that is so important so in most cases when we take things personally is because subconsciously you probably agree with them so that negative feedback that you've taken maybe you're already having doubts about your product maybe you're already having doubts about your work 
So once that person says it, you then take it on. It's almost like you absorb the negativity that's come with it. You start doubting yourself. It's also when you start making absor assumptions about everything is about you. So everything is about me. And this is where that selfishness is. It's me, 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 me. But the point is that that whole conversation, the review or the criticism was not about you at all. It's about the person. It's the person's perception. It's what the person is going through. It's what the person expected. It's all about them. It's not about you. So this is why you need to understand your own, who you are, what you want, where you're going and analyze it and see if this information, if there's anything within there that will help you or not and use that. Nothing other people do is about you. It's about them. They're in their own world. They are wired differently. So stop imposing their own, you know, their own world into yours or trying to impose yours into theirs as well by I expected them to say this, or I expected her to say to, to deliver it this way. You know, when you you know, when you start having those expectations of how they should have spoken to you or not spoken, or in terms of the um, entrepreneur having expectations that they should have liked your product because it's yours after all. So this is where we really need to understand that we are all wired so differently and the control you have is on yourself. So what people say, how they say it is according to their, the, 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 the agreements that they have formed. So those internal relationships that they have formed within themselves based on how they are wired. So it's not about you. It's about how they, you know, the, the, the relationships they have. And it could even be external ones. It could even be how they perceive you. It could even be how they perceive your business. It could be anything. But the, the important thing to remember is that it's them. It's, it, it's, the, it's their own thought process. It's their own emotions. It's them. It's nothing to do with you. So when you get defensive about things, it because you know you just need to stop and remember that this is now you actually being selfish in a way because you are then trying to you're almost doing what they are doing trying to impose your own desires or expectations onto them you want to be right by giving your own opinion do you see and this is a projection of your own wiring and of your own programming and this is where your own agreements are then coming out, your own relationships in terms of the values, the, the beliefs, and how you perceive yourself then comes out. And this is where it's important to then stop and then process it and go, okay, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is what I know. And I know that I did this well. So if they cannot see what I have done, then there's a miscommunication somewhere and now i need to find out what that is and this is where you have conversations if it's a if it's a situation where you can if it's one that you can't take what you need from it and move on so whatever people tell you even when they praise you as well don't take it personally so if you're saying we shouldn't take the negative personally the positive as well you've got to be very careful that you also don't take it personally and it really comes back to not, not waiting to be validated or seeking validation from other people for it to define who you are or for it to you know, show who you are. No, be comfortable and confident in who you are. Who does God say you are? Be confident in that so that whether people praise you or criticize you, it doesn't matter because you're secure in who you are you're secure in what in what you do so be comfortable in your own unique journey and stop seeking those external praises because it's the same principle when people get cross with me i don't take it personally because i know that they're dealing with it themselves it's not it's to do with them it's not me you know what i will do but even when somebody says that the way i spoke to them they did not like it it's still not about me it's about them but the the yeah, emotional intelligence then comes in is okay if this person said that they didn't like it 
what I will do is next time when I speak to them, I know that this is not something they like. And now this is the way I will just adapt it. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm basically find out what do they like. And then it's up to me to decide if I want to come, if that relationship is that valuable for me to adapt to that situation. If it is fine, if it's not, then I, I, I can adapt, I can change that relationship. So I don't want that I can move away if it's costly, if it's draining me, then if it's one that I don't need, I don't, that is not beneficial to me, then it's time to, you know, move away from it. But it's important to understand that it's still not about you. So the way somebody takes how I said something is to do with them, not me, but I can adapt. And this is where relationship then becomes important. So, you know, even somebody comes to tell me that, oh, you're so good, you know, or you're wonderful or all that. It shouldn't even face you because you should know. It's that knowing that, you know what, I know I'm wonderful. I know that I'm good at what I do. And it comes back to that promise. I was I made in God's image and he says he will bless the works of my hands. So anything I do is already blessed. So it, I know that. You see, so it's a fact. It's something, it's, it's a blessing that God has already given it to me. So I know it. You see, so it's being comfortable in who you are, comfortable in the gift that you have, so that it's not when somebody says, oh, you're good, then it don't makes you feel good, or you, it makes you believe that you're good. No, God has already told you that you're good because he dwells in you already. So what you need to do is do the work you need to do, do the learning you need to do, follow the what you need to follow and what you need to learn, you're still picking up and learning. You know, so if somebody says you're good at something, why did they even say that? What is it they saw? And then you make sure that that actually aligns truly with what you want to be perceived as well. So that's also important. The other things, when you take things personally, you set yourself up for hurt and disappointment. Because what you're doing is almost giving giving the person that giving other people permission to determine your emotions or determine what you do. So uh, so it's important to be that to have that confidence in yourself and in what you're doing. When you see people as they are without taking it personally, you will never be hurt or disappointed by what they say. Or what they do because you know that it's about them and you have no control over it but you can use the information for your benefit to enable you get to where you want to get to so if if, if other people say one thing or, or somebody or people that you know say something but do something else you know maybe they say they will do something but do something else you are the one actually lying to yourself when you don't pay attention to them so because they are showing you who they are. So if they do it once, then you need to be then cautious of how you deal with them and adapt your interaction with them, but not expecting that they should do differently or that they should have done differently. That is who they are. You can have the conversation with them that it's not good when you, that, you know, it doesn't feel good and it doesn't inspire confidence or integrity when you say you do something and not do it. You can have that conversation because they might not be aware of it. But in terms of them making the change, it, 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 you, that is where you, not, you need to draw the line and not have the expectation because you don't know if they would. And, and having that expectation then sets yourself up for more hurt and more disappointment. So it's important to learn to trust yourself to, or, or rather it's important, I'll say, to, um, to learn to trust yourself to make the right choices and stop putting the trust or put, stop putting your trust in other people to do what they, would, what they say they would do or to do what you expect them to do. So trust in your own self to make the right choices, which is actually seeing what they say and really work, and using that to determine that agreement, that alignment with that person. You are and can only be responsible for yourself. You are not responsible for what other people say. You are not responsible for what other people do. You can only be responsible for you. And that's so important to remember. 
And, you know, bringing this back, I've used a lot of external relationships because it has a lot of impact on what we do. But also what I want you to do is now reflect on this in terms of your thoughts, because how you think about situations would determine how you trust, how you expect, and all these things need to be managed. And that's part of the next step, which we're now moving into in our 90 day, which is reframe your mind. And this is so important because once you can uh, master this and learn this, it will save you a lot of hurt, it will save you a lot of disappointment, but most importantly, it will enable you progress and get to where you want to get to because you're focused on where you're going and most importantly, you know who you are, what you want and how to get there. So I hope this really, you know, has sparked some um, brain rewiring in your brain and um, I look forward to seeing you next week.